Hey guys, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. If you're first time joining us today, I am Zeph. Uh, today we're gonna to be working on a John Deere S780 combine that I inspected and I'm doing repairs on in the shop. Um, the One of the lift cylinders on the feeder house is leaking. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild one of these 90 millimeter lift cylinders. And hopefully it'll give you some extra tips to be able to get the job done easily and safely. Let's check it out. guys we're working on Scarlet here the s780 combine and I went ahead and got the pin out of this end of the cylinder and then I take this pin out and then I flip the cylinder upside down to where that fittings pointing straight down and I pin her back in set her on a jack stand where she's angled down so we could drain the oil out of the cylinder so we ain't fighting that but what a guy wants to do is take this snap ring off and then you want to take this paint off the outside edge of this guide. And then you want to shoot some juice down in here, some penetrant. I like to use PB Blaster and just shoot her down in there. Let her soak. Cause we got to drive this rod guide in. So if you don't take this paint off and clean all this rust and gunk out of here when you shove her in you just bind her up and then you almost need two tractors to separate it apart so if you take the time and clean this up real good and then push it in you can actually take this rod out by hand once you have the filler ring in place Okay, so we got the, the rod drove in and you wanna use a large punch and a big freaking hammer. Drive that sucker in so you can see this groove here. And then we're gonna put our fillering in, which is going to close this gap here. So our snap ring will compress as we pull this uh, rod out. Okay, we're gonna take the dirt wiping seal out of the guide. That's what keeps dirt from getting inside here and I think that's what's failed because it's pretty grimy inside of this guide here. Using a snap-on 45 degree angle o-ring pick, then you're gonna pick the plastic bushing out of the inside.
It's a little stubborn to get out of there. Okay, once that's out, you're gonna flip it around and then you're gonna take the oil seal out. That's the seal that's gonna hold oil pressure back. And then we're gonna take the, the O-rings off the outside of the guide. and take the backing ring off. Now we're gonna take the piston and take the seals off of it. four pieces to this seal. There's two backing rings, and then a big thicker seal, and then there's a rubber seal underneath it all. And it's pretty stiff. I'll take the rubber seal out from underneath. And then we can take the bushing off the back. And now we can take both those pieces and put them in the washer tank. Fold the seal into like a pretzel and then you grab it with your needle nose pliers to hold it in a position to be able to fit that seal down in there. Then you just let go and it snaps into place. If it doesn't go in all the way you can finish putting it in with your fingers. But it's a lot easier to get that seal in there like that. Put a new Bushing inside, snap it in place, put a new dirt wiping seal. Flip it around, we're gonna put a new oil seal in it. Now we're gonna put the O-ring on the outside. Put the, uh, the backing ring and the other O-ring on. That backing ring's pretty stiff. It's hard to get it rolled on there. You just kinda kinda dig with your thumb and roll it around until you get it in the groove. Put the larger O-ring on. And then I like to take my pick and get underneath the O-rings and roll them around to make sure that they're not twisted. Now the guide is done. Now we can work on putting our piston back together. Put the, snap the bushing on the back. Put our rubber seal in first. Roll it 
on, then I like to put the first backing ring on. Then this next piece is the hardest seal to get on, but I have a trick. You start it down on one corner and get it worked around, then you hold it in place, and then you take a rag so you can put more pressure on your thumb without hurting your thumb, and then you just roll it on around while putting pressure down on it with your thumb, and it'll roll right in place. Then push it down against that backing ring. put your next backing ring on and the piston is done. So now I lube up the seals with some hydraulic oil and the o-rings on the outside. We're going to slide it onto the rod here. piston on, lube up the seals on it as well, now I'm going to clean the oil off the threads and the oil off the nut, wipe it with the rag, I'm going to spray it with some brake clean. We want to get all the oil off of it so when we put our Loctite on there, it'll work a lot better without any oil sitting in the threads. Wipe all the excess brake clean off. We're going to use red Loctite 277. Thread the nut on by hand. I like to roll it on with my fingers quite a bit of the ways to get that Loctite spread all through the threads. And then we're going to ram it home with the big Milwaukee. back in.
So while putting these lines on, I noticed something I didn't see before, but when I tightened this line, I noticed that this line is hitting the frame here, and it's damaged the hose, and it's kind of kinked it and got it wrinkled up. So at one point in time, I noticed the scarring on this cylinder and this little boo-boo right here. I think somebody had the, the stop down and the, it jumped over the cylinder and scraped down, then it probably came down here and bent this fitting down to now where that line's touching. And this is just another good example of why you should never get under a feeder house without this stop down in place because that hose could blow any time and this feeder house could fall. So never get under a feeder house unless you've got it supported with jack or this stops down because that hose could blow at any second. There we got a new hose made and installed. You can see that looks a lot better. It's not gonna get into that frame when this lift cylinder goes up and down, but there she is, boys. She's a little scarred up, but she's gonna live to see another day. Um, that's how you rebuild one of those 90 millimeter lift cylinders. And hope you guys enjoyed watching uh, this video. And if you could, give me a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and comment below. And I'll see you guys next time.